Hello and welcome to Pursuit Perfect Systems correction video in relation to the Dirac Live setup instruction video that was posted recently, specifically in relation to the UMIC1 calibration file. Now it was pointed out uh, in the comments section of the Dirac Live instruction video that I'd incorrectly explained you know, the importance of a, of a calibration file for a microphone and how it works within Dirac Live. And looking back over the video, that was totally correct. And I appreciate the uh, chat for pointing that out. So just to explain uh, how we get the calibration file is we go to the mini DSP website uh, on the UMIC1 page and we import the serial number for our individual UMIC1 and then we download from the website two files. One file is for a stereo correction and there is a second file called 90 degrees and that is for a multi-channel uh, correction or multi-channel set of measurements where the microphone is, is positioned vertically. But for stereo which is what the instruction video was for we use the mic the UMIC1 mic horizontally and we use the normal file. So if we open up the file you will see at the top that this is actually a specific file to this microphone and that is something that I didn't explain correctly in the video also so as you can see the red arrow is pointing to the serial number for the microphone which obviously corresponds to the original file just explaining what a mic calibration file does it actually corrects for imperfections in the microphone itself and uh, the UMIC one has an individual set of corrections per each individual microphone. Oh, so just quickly showing you, um, you know, what I've been talking about. Last time I kind of overlooked this step a little bit, just, you know, kind of glossed over it and, and actually showed the wrong steps to take. Uh, um, it was incorrect. So th this is obviously Dirac Live, a calibration tool. We're in the microphone config at the moment. So normally this would say, um, UMIC1, but obviously I haven't got it plugged in for the moment. So just please ignore this. This would say UMIC1, obviously when that's plugged in. Um, this is the step that I, I kind of overlooked. And if you click on, this is you know where we put our calibration file. So um, it's my fault really. I just you, know, just, you just sometimes you assume people know stuff and I didn't explain it correctly. So, you know, what I did before was obviously click load file and then I, I click this file here. But well, this is literally just a generic um, microphone cow file so that is just quickly what I used to to kind of show the video just through sort of speed and haste really so I apologize for that what I should have done is shown the correct step which is to get our specific um, calibration file which is on my desktop so um, there we go so this is it this is obviously the serial number for uh, obviously my UMIC one now if we look actually at the difference between the files on the left here this is the kind of stock uh, XTZ one which is just a generic one built into this software and on the right here this is the actual correction so you know at 10 hertz um, you know the microphone's hot by best part of six decibels so if you remember we've got the frequency down the left and the, the amount of decibel difference on the right so minus six decibels so obviously the microphone's got a bit of a peak in the low end um, but realistically as I mentioned before if you look at kind of 30 hertz on both of them, obviously, you know, 30 hertz, still no correction on the XTZ. But we look, you know, in real, real world terms, um, you know, look at 29 hertz, it's less than a decibels variation needed with the with the uh, UMIC one. Look, 1 dB at 35 hertz, 1 dB at 44 hertz. Can you could you hear that? Possibly, possibly not. 1 dB at 50 hertz, and then obviously down uh, through 60 hertz. Look, um, so if we get rid of this one, this is what we're looking at. Oops, this is what we're looking at. So you can see it better on this rubbish monitor. So yeah, <clears throat> so scrolling down. So this is our frequency again. So look, one dB difference through the 40s and the into the 50s, and less than a decibels difference into the 50s. A lot 55 hertz um, up into the 70 hertz. Look, 70, 80 hertz, less than a dB difference, half a dB um, up into the 20s. So what's interesting when you flick through this calibration file you can see the amount of adjustment that's put in obviously for the microphone so that that is excellent um that is part of a, of a usp uh for the umic one is that you know how accurate the calibration files are and the fact they're individually done per microphone so i, I kind of glossed over that important you know you leak selling point really for the umic one when i was talking about it before and um <clears throat> obviously if we look through now these kind of minute adjustments like 0.06 and stuff, 
I think really it's, it's more a case of you know direct live is an ultra accurate system getting you know getting trying to get a frequency response probably within half a decibels difference. So these kind of minute differences are not really going to make a difference. But I suppose when we kind of get up, you know, this is the six kilohertz range at 1.4 dB. So it's not a massive amount of difference. You know, a decibel here, a decibel there. Possibly is all about this higher frequency range. So if we're using at 1.7s, that is our highest. So if we're using a uh, you know ultra accurate system that's getting us to within half a decibel's difference, you know, or half a decibel's worth of accuracy, then you know, then this is important, you know, to be correct. So that that's the purpose of a, of a calibration file is to make sure our, our, micro, our microphone measurements are as accurate as they can be, which obviously allows direct and then be uh, as accurate as it can be. So um, just quickly back into the software. So again, just quickly. So we load our file, it will be titled as per the serial number for the microphone and then we load that from wherever it's saved on the computer. So for me, I just quickly saved it on the desktop. So again, I apologise for uh, you know glossing over that uh, last time round. It was just an oversight, obviously, for the video. You know, a lot going on in, in one's mind when you're trying to make a, you know, a detailed video and I apologise for any confusion that's led to anybody. Obviously, from that, um, hopefully this video will... Um, clear that up for people moving forward.